across the, the oceans to go and look at stuff. Um, we've got a lot of our um, Harcourt's international partners that also supply us with a few things that they really see work well for them. So uh, what you're going to see today is basically a combination of all those stuff. I can most of them. What has your thought been on those three videos that you've seen there? Yeah, energetic. You didn't see the agent. There was one that you briefly saw the two listing agents. But the focus is ultimately about the property and the lifestyle. Yeah. Selling the lifestyle of the property. Do you think your seller wants to see you bragging about yourself in a video? Or do they want to see their property being featured? Okay. But often I think we, we misconstrue because we go in here and we go and create all these videos where it's just me and I'm just showing all of the amazing things that I do, but we fail to actually realize that we market this. We're supposed to be featuring this property. It needs to look amazing. We need to sell the lifestyle that it is. So going back to my initial statement, you need to have a full-time videographer. And I'm pretty sure Josh, you guys uh, have, uh, Josh might, might have a full-time videographer, unless he's the videographer. But <laughs> the reality is Josh, is most likely the single person I've seen in the time Harcourt that actually is doing what you're seeing over here. Um, and that's the type of level of marketing we should be considering, is getting to that level where we say, listen, it's a short video, gone are the days of images as a slideshow going past, or just focusing on a few rooms and just panning across. You need to sell the lifestyle. Your sellers will love it. Your buyers attach themselves to the property and the lifestyle, and they, they don't get blurred by thinking it's another marketing piece and they just see Hogwarts everywhere. And again, we all love Hogwarts, but I'm pretty sure, again, everyone would agree, you want to buy the property and not buy the agent or buy Hogwarts when it comes to this. Okay. Mm. So again, I know it's a bit, maybe a bit controversial for some of you guys, but I promise you, these things, these types of videos do exceptionally well. Um, and when we look at social media, the next thing I'm going to show you is that social media is very heavy, heavy uh, video dependent. You want to be able to meet the algorithms and give the platforms what they want. Video is the only way that you'll be able to do that effectively. And that's what we want. So in this video, right now. fit in that small suitcase so it's a challenge that they gave the staff 30 items that's my suitcase this morning was the guilt and mine is pretty much closing. Items. So, this is exactly the same company 
this is a way suitcases and what they did is they made a very nice video so they've got a lot of videos on the instagram you can go have a look at them this video that you're seeing on the left is showcasing the suitcase really professional you know good quality that they did it has 17,000 views how many, how many views do you think this video over here has? A couple of million. Okay. Three million. Yes. So again, there's a bit of irony here. I'm, I don't want to contradict myself, but again, there's, there's other elements that also come into play. Is, are you engaging? Is the content you're creating engaging enough? Something that's very, very popular now on social media is creating challenges. So like I said, in this example was um, they were challenging people how many items they can fit into a suitcase and that's the thing that made it viral because everyone has that experience of listen I don't know if the suitcase is going to close because I'm packing a whole bunch of stuff in here so it's not always the high production value stuff that also goes viral it's finding what works with the algorithms and if people cut an arm, if they see themselves in, um, in, in that scenario um, and something else is becoming very popular is videos where there's no there's no indication of language or country so you'll see someone creating a pot you'll watch the entire video of someone creating a pot from scratch where they've got a clay they just make it you watch it i think the fact that it mm. can actually transcend countries you don't need to even speak the language to understand it mm. those things are doing really well mm. so again challenges at this point in time um, you can think of any challenges that you can do in your office um, that would be a good opportunity for people, you know, who can put up the awkward gazebo the quickest, time them, things like that, that you can see as a challenge, that you can record, make it publish, or publish it on social media, and see there's a potential for you guys to also have some, some virality. I'm moving on quick because like I said, there's a lot of stuff here. Next thing is about online marketing, social media, online presence. Something you might not know is that Google uh, is does one thing really really well you're able to obviously find things but 46 percent of all searches on google is local based searches so it means if i'm typing in something i most likely say uh, best coffee shop best coffee shop near me mm -hmm. so it's local businesses the benefit is obviously for us as real estate agents that we've got something like our google my business which hopefully you guys are keeping up to date as regularly as possible. But I want to share with you an ex example of something we did to get um, some of our offices, some of my inland offices to rank naturally without paying any money higher on Google, which I think everyone wants. But I have to, have to give you guys a bit of a warning. Google doesn't always, in all the areas, apply the same rule. Google is always testing, and we'll talk a bit about that later. So whatever I'm searching here, if I search for a different area, I might get a completely different result and even a different layout. But in my area, in my offices, we've been able to see something similar where we said, if I type in real estate Rustenburg, so Dina is here, so she can testify to this. If I type in real estate Rustenburg, I haven't asked for Harcourts, I didn't indicate an agent or anything, I just said, Real estate, Rustenburg, there at the top. Because most searches are local, they bring up local businesses. They bring up the top three. In this scenario, you'll see that Harcourts is right there. Now, Adina, you can correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong but when we did this activity the first time, you guys were on page number two yeah. of opening up where there's a whole list of 20 and then you go to the second page. And you guys were in the middle of the second page. So how did Adina get to this position over here? Reviews. If you can push up your reviews for your offers, it's the quickest way for you guys to be able to rank much higher in your area. Now, just think of the ripple effect of this. For your agents and you, if I go and do a listing presentation, my question to my, my potential seller should be, can you please open up your Google and type in real estate and obviously the suburb where the client lives? And if you appear there 
and I know it's very small, but I'll read it out for you. If you've been here and you've got the most reviews and the highest rating, so Adina, you guys have 4.6, 4.3, um, and you've got 47 reviews, you've got the most of your one year. No, no, I'm lying. Uh, Just Properties has got 79, but they've got a lower rating. This becomes a listing tool for you. So listen, you need to list with the, the office that has the highest reviews, of oh, highest rating and the most reviews. I've seen it with Hilton. You guys have got 200 and 50. 250 reviews already. I think Dunn, you guys are second with, I think the most second most number of reviews. You guys also have quite a lot of reviews as well. The quickest way for you to rank organically would be to make sure you guys find a way to share that link where, a, where your clients are able to give you a review. Now remember, reviews on Google don't need to be the same as with I'll rate my agent. If your agent gave great service to a person, and bless you, they might have not um, sold the property to that person or they didn't get the mandate, they can still ask that client to write the review. Now, the easiest way is Everyone's got a page on our national website. If you go to your own page on the national website, you go right down on your office page, you'll find that we only display the four and five star rating on there. That section where it says write a review, if you click on that, that link that's there, I'm gonna give you know, an easier way, you can obviously all go to Google My Business or Google My Business Profiles and copy that link, but that, if you click on that, it opens up really nicely on your mobile device where a person can just tick the number of stars and give a short review. It's the easiest way for your office to get more reviews. Incentivize the agents. I think more now you guys also did incentivize even your clients. Where you said, listen, you guys are gonna give something to the exam. I think it was a thousand, five thousand rand voucher. What was the um, that's the thing so it really does now here's the bad news you have to keep it up you have to be continuous with that because I know for a fact there's a few Saladina and Extreme the other office that did exactly the same Extreme office in uh, Alberton they also want page number two of the results which no one goes to also incentivize the agent to say, listen, the one that can get the most reviews in the next six weeks, they get a you know prize, prize or a voucher. It jumped up, but you have to make sure that every single week, it's a conscious effort. Consider you as business leaders sending out a message or a, a, as soon as a mandate comes in, sending it to the client, say, listen, you know, um, our agent pitched the mandate to you. Thank you so much for um, allowing the agent to actually work on it. Would you mind giving us a review and feedback on that agent's performance? Here's a Google review link. Or even further down the road where maybe they, um, there's a buyer that already you know, signed the offer to purchase. You as the business leader, because it comes from an authority level, I'd like to get the feedback of how my agent performed. Would you mind leaving us a review? Now, I haven't incorporated in here but there's even a tool, and Hogwarts done, um, there's a few tools that can do this, but there's even a tool that you could reroute that link to a specific page where if the client gives a four and a five star rating, it takes them to Google, but if the client gives one, two, or three, it doesn't go to Google, it still captures the information, and it sends it to you, so nothing goes public. You get to know what obviously is happening in terms of the bad service, but the good service goes to Google and you can always just make sure you front run any of those bad reviews. Okay. So the technology is out there. Your competitors aren't cottoning onto this. This is free. You don't have to pay anything. Just need to make sure it's an activity in the office to do. Then we, um, we have to do something um, with, with our social media, which is be everywhere. You have to consider the fact that if you just have Facebook, that doesn't cut it anymore. You need to have multiple channels. And not only that, there's a very fancy word. If Anton was here, I think he would have struggled to pronounce this one. 
Um, I'm joking, he was he said, he's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill me if he hears this recording. Now there's proof as well. Oh damn, okay. So it's omnichannel marketing. So what is omnichannel marketing? And um, as I said earlier, we really went far and wide to get information about what's working. And this is something that Lee Perry, he didn't tell us about omni-channel marketing, but he's actually doing this, and this is actually one of the things he said, is getting them a lot of business. And the fact is that everything speaks to each other. If I've got a campaign that I'm running for this two months, it means that my email marketing has that same message. The radio ad we do has the same message. The flyers we hand out has the same message. The social media campaigns we run have the same message. Everything speaks to each other. So the client, doesn't matter if I open up my email, I get the same message. If I see your ad on Facebook, I get the same message. If I see something on YouTube or I listen to the radio, the same message gets uh, across. It's a very important part. And again, that's a big, big thing when it comes to artificial intelligence. Uh, Christelle and I um, attended a webinar from a guy that is the best person for um, SEO, Neil Patel. And um, artificial intelligence is making its way into SEO, where it's now ranking you based on omni-channel marketing more so than just individual. Because with artificial intelligence, we now know that I can be very, very specific about the request that I'm asking. In the past, we gave broad questions like, who's the best agent in my area? Now I can almost be as specific to say, who's the best real estate agent in this row that specializes in sectional, sectional title properties? Artificial intelligence will be able to give us the best results, and Google is currently leading the way with that. Omnichannel marketing. So just uh, as I said earlier, again, you'll be able to see the slides. I know it's very difficult for anyone there at the back to be able to see this, but just the indication. Multi-channel, we confuse the client with different messages. Omni-channel, basically any type of interaction the client has with us has the same sort of message that they get. Now this is something that um, we also need to face is the fact that we have to be doing ads. So we need to be running ads. I think gone are the days that we could just say, listen, you know, I, I'll maybe consider spending some money on marketing. Now, my personal opinion is that if you can, you need to be able to do this in-house. It's not a difficult thing. The same amount of effort it takes for you to post something on social media is the same amount of effort it would take you to be able to run an ad campaign. It's not harder, I see Hilton shaking his head, he, I promise you it's, it's not difficult, it's just about understanding how it needs to be done. The fact is that if you, if you go and go to any car website, as soon as you go off that website, instantly you'll see on your social media there's ads for the, that car brand and even competing car brands mm. that come up instantly. Real estate is going to follow that same, exact same um, uh, route mm. where I go to the website and I might have not clicked to inquire on that property, but I'm gonna get 10 reasons why I should buy a property in the Atlantic Seaboard. But I've just been looking at a property in the Atlantic Seaboard. That's the type of marketing we should be doing. Now, if this is way above your ability to maybe just um, learn that skill to do it on your own, then the quickest solution will be uh, the one I'm showing you now, where we've got two options. It's basically the same platform, but the one is integrated into prop data, and the other one is basically independent, but it still uses prop data's information. So prop data has prop fuel, and then Flow has its own platform, like I said, but it basically takes the information from prop data mm -hmm. and it pushes through. So let me explain the difference between the two for you. So this is the version from prop data, the prop fuel campaign. They've got these packages, and I'm most likely, if you've captured a listing, you would have seen that there's an option to activate this. There's a 3,000, 5,000, and 8,000 Rand per month um, option. It allows you to take 10 of your properties and have it basically a run and feature on these platforms. It's pretty much a use it or lose it type of scenario. So if you've selected the 10 properties, they will then feature through. 
The 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 just means it reaches more individuals and more people. But it's an easy way for, for an officer to say, listen, we just want to be visible. We just want to make sure that we have properties out there. If someone is looking for a property, the algorithms on Facebook and Instagram are really good. If your intention is to find a property, there's a high likelihood that those ads are going to find you. But the reality is, it's still 3,000 Rand, it's still 5,000, it's still 8,000. It's quite a significant amount of money. But I know for a fact that some people in this room have been spending a years back 10,000, 11,000 Rand on a newspaper ad where you had no indication of how many people looked at it. Running ads is going to be the way, it's going to replace the way that we need to spend money on newspapers years ago. It's most likely going to be exactly the same route. What's the difference between this then, obviously, and directly with fuel? Uh, with flow all the leads are sent or when someone clicks on an ad they get sent directly to your website which is ideal for you and ideal for us because they don't need to go and create a different page um, where the client will obviously go and then flow also has their own pixel on there that they can get more information if you use it through prop data it goes directly to your page where you can have your own pixel added onto the page, your awkward page, and you can then use that information to remarket maybe in a separate campaign afterwards. Okay, if, if whatever I'm saying is foreign to you, come chat to me when we have our tea break or our lunch break. But that's the reality. This is not a bad option, I think, if you aren't running your ads on your own. Second option is then directly with flow. Now there's a positive with flow is that if you choose to go external on Flow's platform, which is not on prop data, if a client inquires or clicks on one of those ads, then it actually shows as a separate type of lead, as a Flow lead coming in. With the previous one, it just shows as an inquiry. They don't have a way that they can uh, indicate that someone was originated from uh, the, the flow campaign because it, they end up on the Harcourts with property but with flow they build a specific page a landing page where the property is housed and if a client clicks on that they go to that page they see the information they can even inquire on there for your seller's report there will be a separate section that will indicate that this person inquired through the pro flow marketing okay so that's pretty much the difference there's an additional 265 rand fee per month if you go this route. This is to connect uh, prop data and flow to each other. That's 265 excluding that and excluding your budget that you will have available for ad spend. Now they take about 35% of your budget. So if I've got one rand, 35 cents flow users to basically do all the stuff here. The rest is left over to run the ad. Okay, so I'm giving you the information. Remember, if you do this on your own, that entire one round can be spent for marketing. Okay, but that's the price you pay for automation and making things a bit simpler and easier. So yeah, if, if you are looking for ads, uh, to be able to run ads, and you don't think you've got the ability to do it right away, this is not a bad option. Um, and if you want to have something that can maybe stand out, get you those mandates, there's opportunity. I did ask um, about if I can maybe just share some of the st stats from, from uh, Flow. So this is the, some of the campaigns that um, Flow did for you guys. So I'll just take you guys through this. This is pretty much a seven month campaign. Now, um, again, I think about you already answered my question. This, in your opinion, wasn't a fantastic campaign with massive results in terms of leads and uh, actual results not you don't really you don't have to say I'm, from, I'm not affiliated with flow so you can say no no, no, no. no but, but uh, I think the ROI was good enough so mm -hmm. it created leads yes um, but the money spent for the return received I don't yeah. think it was yeah okay so guys I think uh, the, the results definitely you can still show this to your seller it's not bad the client still will be impressed with the fact that so many people have been able to see this uh, ad so many clicks that came through but it is still a case of 
you know, if there's 444 leads coming in, and uh, again, you get Eber confirming that there wasn't particularly a sale coming from that, you have to weigh it up. It will get better. Uh, I can promise you it will get better. But initially, I think that this has been a bit of this um, scenario, same scenario that we've seen with other offices. I have to admit that the four ways office, I'm going to show you the results for four ways office um, as well. They've, um, they've got two leads um, that were really promising, but again, 73 in total, but two were really promising. So you have to consider that. Uh, again, all honesty, like I said, we want you guys to use it if you don't see yourself being able to uh, learn the skills. But if I can encourage you, I, I would say try and see if you can't, can't run some of those ads on your own. It's just a fantastic way for you to learn. It honestly is the same as posting. You know where to click, know what to do. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we already have on the hub available for you, templates that you can literally just use and start marketing on your own. And then you don't have to pay an external company. But for anyone that says, listen, I just want no hassle, no fuss, but I want something to be put on Facebook, put on Instagram, this is a really good option. Okay, let's talk about community. Some community marketing that um, seems to be working really well. This was uh, from Etienne. I'm pretty sure everyone remembers Etienne. Etienne Lobis um, he's currently at uh, our international office, Hogwarts uh, Solutions. So he gave us a few ideas of things that they've seen work really well in their community. So this is something that they are doing quite actively. They obviously call it appraisals. But they go, if they've done evaluation for a client in a specific street, they go and hand out this specific flyer informing everyone in the street that they've actually done an appraisal or evaluation for a property in their street. Not saying which property it is, but their information is on there. And they're informing them, again, this is one version of it. There's other versions where they tell them, listen, you will be seeing cars, a lot of cars coming through in your road. You'll be seeing maybe some boards being put up. We just want to make you aware of this. On the back end of this, is a QR code, find out what your home is worth, where a client can scan and they can put their information in. You can try and scan it, you'll, you'll see it goes directly, I also tried to scan it, um, goes to their website where you can fill in the, your information and indicate where your address is. Um, obviously I don't have a Brisbane property, but that's what they add on the back end of the, uh, the pamphlets and the handout. Now, because we are talking about QR codes, QR codes is definitely back. So after COVID, QR codes is definitely a good way for you to capitalize on um, being able to print something and make sure you can find out if someone is actually clicking on it and going and visiting the website. I know Hartwig has done a great effort with his marketing where he's added QR codes on golf carts. So, and you're rotating the property of the week. So client, Every week, can go to the golf course, they scan the code, and they can see what properties we have featured. QR codes can be used so many ways. So you can have people register for things, you can give people directions, you can push, push people to your website. You can also take that link and use something called Bitly. So I'm pretty sure most of you know Bitly. And it even tells you, it can tell you how many people have clicked on it so you can get some real world analytics about what's happening, how many people have clicked on this actual QR code. So try and incorporate more QR codes on the actual pamphlets and marketing you send out. It's a great way for you to make sure that you're sending people and doing that omni-channel marketing as we said earlier. Something else, this is from Lee and from Tina Sanders. Both of them said this really works well for them. In their communities, what they do is, uh, any any new shop that opens up, so if there's a new coffee shop, um, they go and actually see if they can get a deal with this um, coffee shop or whatever new local shop opened up. So Tina has these cards that she gives out where basically they say, listen, coffee is on us. So if you give a client that specific card, the client can go and redeem a free coffee. What Lee does is he says, listen, uh, we will be distributing 35 thousand flyers in the next six weeks they go to the coffee shop they say listen 
we're going to be handing out these flyers, 35,000 of them. What deal can you give us? And we'll put it on the, the flyer. And he said, they've gotten many times where they've gotten, buy two coffees, get one free, um, you know, buy a coffee or buy a <coughs> slice of cake and get a cappuccino for free. These are really good opportunities for you to capitalize, especially if it's a new business. You know, they don't maybe have a big marketing budget, so you can help them out by saying, listen, we'll be handing out pamphlets anyway. At the back of our pamphlet, we'll just have the section that, you know, they can go and redeem something. It also um, conditions your clients and your um, community that whenever they get something from your office, they physically get something. I can get um, you know, a discount at a bookshop. I can get uh, a free coffee. So they will be looking out to get that pamphlet from you because they know that there's something that's in it for them. Mm -hmm. Something else, we've tried this um, as well, but they've also been incorporating it in Australia quite well, is community reports from all of the campaigns that I've run. Area reports, community reports, those are the things that have had the best traction, and I think we spoke about it just two days ago with Hilton. We had a total, I think, of how many Hilton? There was 3,000? 600. Yeah, 3,600 people downloading um, a property report. And yeah, I think we worked out it was about 300 and something people. Um, yeah, it was about 300 that we said that we got an opportunity to possibly do, do evaluation or even go and see to maybe do a, a listing presentation for. But area reports, quarterly, but here's the big thing, you have to try and do it every single quarter so that the clients get to expect mm. every quarter that I'm gonna get an updated area report about what's happening in my community. Um, what Etienne said, they actually have a very nice looking book that they do, but this is Tina's version where it's just basically a A3 foldable one and it's got all details of the sales that happened with information about you know the community. Really nice handout, and again, there's a whole bunch of automation you can do with this as well, but getting the information, that's a key part, and then making sure that it gets distributed to your community, big, big thing. What they've also said, uh, this is again Tina, so for her, um, sold stories, not just saying, listen, we've sold a property, they very much go into detail about the properties that they've sold. So they go, I know it's very difficult for you, anyone to see it, but what they do is, on this graphic, it says how many leads they got, how many days the property was on the market, how many offers they had, how many people walked through the property. Was it a record um, in the street? So was it the highest sold property in the street? Because those are really good things for you to brag about that you should be sending out and not just say, just sold. Go into detail because if I, if I can see that your agency is producing 814 views and you got 95 leads and 25 people through the property and three offers that means that you guys are busy but if i just do the just sold i've got no idea what's actually happening in terms of how many people are interested in buying a property in my room so this is just an example again um, this is just a few small pieces you'll get it on the presentation but this one specific you'll see it says 85 percent of, of uh, uh, recent sales have been street or suburb records. A lot of your offices are selling properties where it's the highest value in that street or in that suburb. You should be marketing yourselves as the people that have been able to get record numbers for your properties. What, um, what Lee Berry said about them, um, they also do a lot of quote unquote uh, bragging. Uh, this is not Lee's office, but what he said is, they got some bad feedback where they said, listen, doesn't really gel well because some people feel like we're just bragging and we're just saying, listen, we sold properties. And he said they stopped it and you could actually see how the inquiries declined because people were saying, listen, but then your office isn't selling anymore because we're not seeing anything from you guys. Mm. Wow. So you shouldn't let go of uh, the ability to show people that you are active. How amazing is this picture? Mm. If, if you put something similar to this on your social media, there's no timeline you have to say this in the last three months or six months or year or anything. But visually, this is impactful. Mm. Have a drone shot. 
don't pin, you guys have got H-Track. H-Track pins those properties mm -hmm. for you. You can see exactly where the properties were um, placed. A shot like this, posting it on social media, I promise you, people are gonna say, these guys are successful. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. You want me to? Yeah. Kiki. 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 Okay, next one. We're doing, how are we doing for time? Okay, slow, slow, good. So, home staging. This is something that's becoming really, really popular and something that we in South Africa don't do that often. Again, my area, um, well, I don't think in Danville we're going to be, be doing a lot of home staging. Um, we'll be locking, we'll be putting away the kids. That's pretty much uh, home staging where I live. Um, but there's a lot of information to indicate that home staging really does make a property stand out. I think you guys would agree that these pictures look phenomenal. These are all examples of a property that's been professionally staged. And getting some feedback from, um, from the office we've asked that do use home staging, they can actually equate that they sell for 10 to 15% more because the property has been staged. And in Australia, well, Brisbane specifically, 70% of their properties now are staged. Hmm. That's a large amount of properties being staged. Now again, if it doesn't apply to you, I understand that. I also think, like I said, where I live, maybe it's not gonna work, but there's without a doubt an opportunity for us to capitalize on this as well, because we've got properties that with some small tweaks could potentially look a lot better. Here's a few before and after shots. So left before, you can see very much cluttered, a whole bunch of kids stuff, even a vacuum cleaner, that looks much more clean. Can you believe it? This, Low needle fan there, <laughs> suddenly changed into a very nice bedroom. Very cluttered um, looking cupboard and suddenly a nice display. So this was a really nice phrase that Etienne said. He said, what he actually tells his clients is, uh, we need to get your, your home um, from living, living mode to selling mode. So currently, everyone's property is in living mode the way I live, and we need to change it over to selling mode. And this is a prime example of making a property look, that if I go in there, this looks nice, I want to live there. Uh, I think this is the last one. Again, just doesn't look that bad, all honesty, I think many of our properties are like that, but just getting someone in to possibly make it look a bit more, you know, modern, stylish, definitely makes a big impact. So what I'm gonna show you now is just a video. So we've actually got one of our agents that is doing home staging and um, she shared with us just her experience with it. Home staging, why did I decide to include it in my offering? I started using it about 10 years ago. I was looking for a way to um, differentiate myself and my offering from the other agents that I was competing against. So I decided to focus on expired listings and uh, before I would contact them, I would prepare the market research on the home. I'd already been watching it for two or three months, noting how many show days, how many price reductions. And then I would um, say to the seller, uh, you know, would you be interested? I've, I've got a, uh, some market research to help you understand maybe why your house isn't sold yet. So before you decide what to do next, whether to open list it or withdraw it, would you be interested in knowing? And they would mostly say yes. And then uh, it would be a sort of a sole mandate presentation, but it would also include um, the home staging and professional photography. So somewhere in the presentation, I would say to them, um, you know, the house is, is going stale because it's already been on the market maybe three months, six months, whatever the timeline was. And so um, we got to do something different. And this is how I do it. And then I would ask them, uh, do you know what home staging is? And nobody really knows. So just an important point to say is um, it's not interior decorating. It's just presenting the home for sale. There's no perfect home, although your home is perfect and beautiful, but we can sort of maximize how it shows because nobody lives on show. And uh, then once you've staged it, 
uh, we'll take professional uh, photographs of it and then you know relaunch it also in the time it takes to stage the home obviously once they've signed a mandate um i would take down all the other lists you know request that the other listings of it get taken down so the property goes away from the marketplace for a week or two however long it took the seller to stage and that's it that was the magic that actually is how i built my business off of that strategy. Fantastic. Mm. So if, um, if you're not keen on um, actual staging, you can actually do some virtual staging. So I'm going to show you that there are actually some apps you can download. So you can download Design Home or Stagger AI virtual staging. And um, again, you guys will get all get the presentations, but I'm going to just show you an example of how one of them, these apps, could potentially make a room that is empty look a bit better. Okay, so I think there's a clear difference. It doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that fake. You have to again, please, 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 be very careful. Don't, don't um, uh, neglect to let the client know that listen, the property is actually empty. But I'm pretty sure everyone would agree this looks much better than just the open property. Okay, so there's tools and ways to do this. So we're getting to the fun part. Do I have five minutes? Five minutes. I can, so we can do the, the, the AI stuff. You guys want to see the AI stuff? Yes. Otherwise, I must go. Yeah. Okay. No, please stay. <laughs> okay, so quick, quick, quick. I'm going to be quick. Here's the really, really cool stuff. So AI is actually very, really, very really new. So um, last year, about this time, we actually all just started to hear about ChatGPT feels like it's been in our lives for a long time, but actually last year, around about this time, everyone was starting to hear about ChatGPT and we started to use it and eventually got added even to prop data. But artificial intelligence um, was quite bad at creating videos. So I'm gonna show you just a bit of the very first few videos that it, want, that, that it could create. So we asked ChatGPT at that point in time, go and create a video about Vin Diesel selling an energy drink. And this is the this is the quality that we got. So let me play this video. So you can see I'm going to play the entire video. Sorry, let's go back. There we go. Come on. And just play the video. Come on. Where is Vin Diesel? There we go. There go. See I live my life a quarter mile that time. I live my life. And you know, when you're living life in the fast lane like me, you need fuel that matches your intensity. That's why I'm here to introduce you to Vin Diesel Fuel, the ultimate drink. So this is an AI-generated video based on text. So we put in text, power. and um, then it comes up with this example. This was about a year ago. It looks bad. Everyone agrees. You can some, you somehow maybe see it. Either Anton or it's, uh, or it's Vin Diesel. Okay, I, have to, I have to make up for the previous remarks. So uh, okay, the, the muscles, Anton, not the ball. But pretty much a year later, the video I'm going to show you now was, is also text-based AI video generated. But have a look at the difference in one year. just by text, telling AI to create a video. The jump in one year of how good that looks versus mm. the very first one is quite scary. Sure. And this is OpenAI, the guys that make ChatGPT, they've launched 
They are still beta version, but it's OpenAI Sora. You're gonna go and have a look. See what, these are just a few videos that I've pulled from there. Go and have a look at the videos that I was able to create. Sora is the, the chat GPT that creates like videos. The prompts, so what they use as prompts, this is obviously a very long prompt to get that result. So for that video you saw there, this was the prompt they used. But now look at this one. To get that amazing shot you saw in the beginning, that was all they needed to type in there. That's what they got. Um, do I have, do I have, do I have some, just a bit. <laughs> okay, go for it, AJ. Just, what, just, do we'll, we love what you're showing okay. us. Okay. This is also scary. This is already in real estate in the United States. Have a listen to this AI speaking Hello. to Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, hey there. This is Sarah from Barry Jenkins Real Estate Group. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm okay. How about you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So I noticed that you opted into one of our ads about looking for homes for sale recently. Can I talk to you about that? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Six today. Six. Well, I'm very consistent. I'd like to find... Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you feel better soon. In the meantime, do you mind if I ask you... No problem at all. Just to clarify, are you currently looking for a home in a specific area? Okay, hold on and let me let you talk to my husband here. Mm -hmm. Sure, take your time. <laughs> no. Listen to this now. No, I think we're all shutting Thank you. Thank you. I totally get it. Before we wrap up, do you have a time frame in mind for when you'll want to purchase? We have to sell first. Ah, I see. It's common to sell before buying. Once you've sold your current home, do you have an idea of when you'll be ready to start looking for a new one? It has to be before I even sell this. <laughs> I understand sometimes it's important to have a new home lined up before selling the current one. In that case, Correct. do you have a specific time frame in mind for when you'd like to start looking for a new home? As soon as I can sell this one, I don't know why if things are not moving. So the house is not selling so right now. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm based. I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it all depends. Right now it's hard because, you know, you don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I totally get what you mean. It can yeah. be challenging when there are uncertainties involved. Correct. Right. So, like I said, it's understandable that you're. Yeah, it's like you said. Sometimes things can be a bit unpredictable. But hey, I wanted mm -hmm. to let you know that Barry may be available right now. Can I see if he can call you back in a few minutes, or what would be a good time for you to talk to Barry? Um, let's say tomorrow. Like I said, I'm sick today. I don't. And you're lucky I even answered the phone. I'm going to end it there because, um, yeah, it's pretty much just, did you see how this, that was artificial intelligence speaking to the client? Sure. Your prospecting agents that don't want to prospect anymore has the ability to get this AI to not phone one person at a time, to phone your entire farming area at the same time, see if they convert any of those leads, pass it on to you as the agent, phone them because it's a hot lead because someone wants to buy or someone wants to sell. This is already in the United States. Yeah, that is closer then. <laughs> Say again? Yeah, that is closer. You're saying something that, look at this, okay. I'm gonna do this one last thing and I'm out, quick, quick, quick. This, you can have it, take a picture of this if you want. This is where you can go and re replicate yourself. I can go and have myself become artificial intelligence and my voice, and oh, how amazing would it be if we could actually do something in, you know, something in South Africa. There was maybe an African language. You know, would that not be amazing? Here's the reality.
Robin, I'm eating in your time. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Have a look at this. This is that exact website. Here's Afrikaans already uploaded. Ons video skeppingsplatform stel jou in staat om met die klik van 'n knoppie in baie tale te communikeer. What about Zulu? Do you think it might have Zulu? And yes, Zulu. Inkundla yethu yokudala ama video ikwenza ukwazi ukuxhumana ngezilimi eziningi ngokuthofoza inkinopho. Okay. I hope, hopefully I scare the pants of all of you, but in year, one year's time, we most likely will see amazing stuff. And hopefully that after today's session you just saw a few things. Apologies, I'm really sorry that I've run over my time. Uh, but I'll see in this presentation there's just a bit of a little snapshot for you all.